What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Fedi and welcome to my channel and today we're going to talk about the very requested topic about the future cures for hair loss. And by the word cure, I don't even mean the available conventional treatments that can slow down or even stop hair loss in some cases, like finasteride and ridasteride. I mean actual cures that are currently in research and development that can stop androgenic alopecia for good. But before jumping right into the subject, I want you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with the latest breakthroughs in medicine I post here regularly. Our first candidate, and it's actually my personal favorite, is vertiporfin. When it comes to androgenic alopecia, the best option you have, besides of course preventing it in the first place with a 5-AR inhibitor, is undergoing a hair transplant. Hair transplants are amazing, their results are immediate, and they deliver the best risk-reward ratio among other hair loss treatments. But the biggest limitation here is that hair transplant surgeons have a limited donor supply to work with. So that leaves a lot of guys with aggressive forms of hair loss in particular, with the term not a good candidate for this procedure. On top of that, hair transplants, whether done by an FUT or FUE, can leave a pretty bad scar on the back of the head that can be aesthetically unpleasing, especially for those guys who choose to cut their hair short. So the argument about vertoporfin is that it's not because of the actual fact of harvesting the hairs from the back of the head that makes them not grow back anymore. It's the actual trauma caused by the procedure itself the mechanical trauma that causes this healthy tissue in the back of the head to turn into scar tissue, which is basically characterized by its poor vascularization, its rigidity, as opposed to being smooth and healthy tissue, and especially scar tissue lacks uh, sebaceous glands and hair follicles. So theoretically, if we could just find out a way to harvest those hairs with minimal to no trauma, we could harvest the hairs, implant them on the top of the head in the thinning areas, while simultaneously watch the tissue on the back of the head turn into a healthy tissue with healthy hair follicles, thus giving us the ability to perform unlimited hair transplants. And I'm not gonna get into the details of how vertiporfin actually works. I will leave that in another video because I'm determined to make this video as short as I can. But all you need to know now is that vertiporfin inhibits a certain protein called YAP protein that is the one responsible for the activation of the fibroblasts. Fibroblasts are the cells that turn a wounded tissue into a scar tissue. The second candidate of today's video is hair multiplication by Dr. Tsuji and I already talked about this one on my first video that I published on my channel and the way this works is that we have these cells in our bodies called stem cells and stem cells are basically cells that have the ability to turn into whatever type of cell in the body one example of this is hematopoietic stem cells or hemopoietic stem cells and these are cells that we have in our bone marrow and they can basically turn into whatever type of blood cell. So by harvesting stem cells and using special cultures in laboratory, Dr. Suji and his team were able to recreate or multiply hair follicles in mice. And I actually covered that experiment, which you can go ahead and watch on my first video. I will mention it over here. And the last candidate, and I'm actually pretty optimistic about this one is called pyrolutamide or KX826 and it's developed and currently being in research by the company Kintor Pharma and what we have is the phase 1 and phase 2 uh, results of the clinical trials the phase 1 was a massive success because no adverse side effects serious side effects were observed in humans that underwent this study and in phase 2 120 Chinese adult males with androgenic alopecia with various uh, Nordwood scales underwent the study and the results were pretty much that uh, the 5 mg twice a day dose of uh, pyrolutamide achieved 15 hairs in square centimeter change from baseline and that was a lot more than the placebo group achieved. 
Side effects were also pretty mild, with pruritus being the most common side effect, uh, some rash and contact dermatitis also observed in the study. And I said I'm pretty optimistic about this one because KX826 has a different mechanism of action than finasteride or dutasteride, and as you can see in the reported side effects, there were no sexual side effects reported. And we already know that side, sexual side effects are a major concern for finasteride users, and it's one of the biggest um, reasons why people using finasteride often uh, quit this drug. So yeah, as I said, pretty optimistic, and the authors concluded the study by saying that the 5 mg twice a day dose is the one recommended to be administered in the phase 3 clinical trials that we will probably get the results of in, in maybe late 2023 or the beginning of 2024. And one bonus is GT20029, which is a mouthful to say, but it's a protein degrader. It basically degrades protein and it helps in the degradation of the androgen receptors. And we use GT20029 to help with the degradation of androgen receptors so that DHT cannot bind to the hair follicle and it can, thus cannot destroy it. But yeah, we don't really know a lot more about this one other than it uses a system called ubiquinin system that basically tags proteins, or in this case androgen receptors, to be destroyed in the cell by the lysosomes. So yeah, that sums it up. If you do know of any other cure that I missed or maybe didn't mention in the video, please make sure to post it in the comment section. Also, do like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, Stay safe.